Hi friends, welcome to Opa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 5 of in KQL or Kushto playlist. In this playlist, we are going to understand like Kushto query language, right? So this is part 5th of this playlist and in this video, we will be focusing on what are query parameters and how to declare them in Kushto query language and also examples or usage of it, okay? So before watching this video, prerequisites will be watch my azure data explorer playlist at least four or five videos at the starting and then from this custo playlist watch the previous videos why because all my videos are in a sequence order if you follow along then you will get good idea what we are discussing so let's understand what are query parameter statements in custo so queries what we send to custo we may include inside them name and value pairs that means if you write any query in custo which will be sent to uh, ADX or a runtime engine. So in that query, we can include name value pairs also. And that name value pairs, we can call it like query parameters. Uh, how to do that and uh, uh, how to declare them, everything we are going to see with an example. And the uses also I am going to explain, okay. So don't worry. Usually, if you want to parameterize something, then in that case, you can use parameters in your query. For example, you have a query. So let me practically show you this. Let me go to data explorer. So here I have connected to help cluster and inside help cluster, I have samples database inside which I have tables folder and inside this I have strom events folder and here I have strom events table. So you know this table from our past videos we have discussing this table. This table contains a uh, strams related information by states from uh, some open data set which I loaded. If you have seen my previous videos, you know that. So let me execute this table name here. It's kind of select query that will run and give all the rows from this table. So that way we can get an idea like what kind of data we have here. So let's wait for the query to execute and you can see here start time, end time, uh, if you see the state in North California, we have thunderstorm happened and no one injured directly or indirectly, blah, 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 it is. So that means type of event, it can be winter storm, it can be thunderstorm, in which state along with the time and number of people injured and other information. So this kind of information he, we have here. So for example, here, maybe I want to take the uh, storm events uh, where injuries injuries that means it can be direct injury or indirect injury so whatever the injury if that count is more than 90 then give me that event types so in which kind of event types i have injuries more than 90 it can be direct it can be indirect so in that case how i can write query here is in this table strom events what i can do i can write something like this where injuries direct i am going to sum these values injuries indirect so this total greater than 90 then give me that result and i don't want to get all the columns maybe i want to get event type column okay event type column so when you are getting that means select id comma name column something like that right so when it comes to kushto you have to use something called project here we will discuss about project operator in our upcoming videos so project event type okay and also I want to take this sum into a column called total injuries maybe. So what I will do, I will define a different column called total injuries equals to sum of these two values. So this is my query. So when I hit this run button to run this query, I can see the output. So in winter weather, there are 137 people injured. In heat, 187. In excessive heat, 4. For, uh, 22 blah blah okay and here I, I am not grouping by this information so you see excessive heat two times okay so if I group by then it will come as a single row but uh, let's not worry here okay even here it is excessive heat okay so here I am not grouping so the information is coming something like this so let's not worry how to group and everything if you have seen my previous videos you know or even we can group or discuss that group by in our upcoming videos using a sum summary by so don't worry so for now i am for each row i am taking injuries making sum and comparing that sum whether it is greater than 90 or not then get them get them okay and uh, it's since it is a event type 
then uh, instead of event type let me get one more column called there is something called event id so that right you will get most idea of it so if i execute this query now so this this event type is same this event type is same but when it happened is a different timing altogether it's a different id it's a different id so this way now you get a uh, like for this event we have 137 injuries for this event we have 422 for this event we have 187 something like that okay so this is fine this is a normal quisto query right now if you see here we hard coded this value here right so what if if i don't want to hard code this value and i want to use a parameter so that i can send this value randomly like sometime maybe i want to see injuries where more than uh, 50 get me that event ids uh, where uh, more than 200 then get me that event id something like that so that means you need to make this value dynamic whenever you want to make something dynamic you have to use parameterize so you need to parameterize that so how to do that what you can do here is uh, before this table creation before this query declare you, you can use syntax like this okay declare query parameters then in the brackets maybe max value equal then colon then data type of that okay long okay and here i want to directly use this max value now this max value i want to define some default value maybe 90 okay so that means here for this parameter which is type of long we are sending a default value called 90 that means if i don't send any value explicitly then 90 will be taken and that 90 will get replaced here automatically this query will get passed based on this parameter value here and then results will come out so instead of 90 uh, let me keep like more than uh, 150 maybe so if i keep more than 150 you can see this row will go and all other rows will come so let me execute this query now and to see the results you can see now we are able to get only where the events are uh, uh, the total injuries more than 150 okay so maybe i want to get to total injuries where uh, more than 200 that means only two rows will come only in these two events more than 200 people got in injured right this is equals to 200 i am using more than 200 so let or let me use this greater than or equals to 200 so that means even this row will come so now let me execute this now we are getting the events when more than 200 are equal to 200 people got injured okay so so far this is good but if you closely observe this is parameter query parameter and that parameter is going here and we have a default value here that is fine how but i am manually changing this right so generally how to change is uh, if you are calling this uh, query from some third party application which written in c sharp code or which may be making this uh, api call to run this query or maybe python code whatever it is in that cases what you need to do in the request body you need to send this information uh, for this parameter what is the value if you send some value then that value will be taken and it will be placed here and query will execute if you don't send any value then the default value will be taken care okay so if but this is a custo explorer right so here if you want to send a different value altogether uh, to make you sense let me remove this i don't have a default value now now when i execute this query i will get an error if you see the error what it is trying to say is it is trying to say query parameter which is max value is not specified in the request so that means you haven't sent any value for that parameter in the request so how to send it uh, if you don't have a default value then hit alt p in your system in custo explorer and once you hit this is where you have to give some uh, name and value so i have a parameter called max value so let's use that max value for this parameter i want to send a value maybe 90 okay so now 90 will get replaced here and here so automatically this query will execute by 90 as a value here and it will show the results let me hit this run button and let's wait for the query to run now if you see i am able to get back my results so hit alt plus p to uh, run this query uh, by passing some values basically okay to by passing some values to the query parameters okay so now let's go back to our presentation so the main uses of this query parameters is basically to avoid ingestion attacks so what is ingestion attacks 
uh, I would encourage you to watch uh, SQL ingestion videos in the YouTube. So when, whenever you want to dynamically run some query from your application or something where instead of passing the value directly into the query, create a parameter there for that uh, value and pass the value for that parameter from your code. That is a best practice basically. So that will help to avoid uh, hack uh, many uh, vulnerabilities in the code. Okay, people may hack your code and they may mess the data. So that is called uh, ingestion, SQL uh, ingestion. So to avoid that ingestion attacks, we can, it is always suggested to use the query parameters. If all this is not making sense, please watch some SQL ingestion video uh, from the YouTube that will give you more idea because it is almost similar to same thing. And also when you parameterize queries, you get a dynamic control like what value to pass. So that is a second advantage. Okay. So I hope you got an idea. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever I add videos. Thank you so much.